The next challenge is the secure challenge. As you can see here, what we've got is a shape which is created using a number of extrudes. And where the challenge is here is just thinking about the order of how you extrude. OK, and also it, there's a little bit of a challenge in terms of the geometry, in terms of the sketches that you've got to create. So we're going to have a go at creating this in Fusion. We're going to make sure the origins are on so we can see our planes and our axis. I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to go for this plane here, this sort of front plane. I'm going to start with, it's drawn out to two circles. So the first circle, and I press C on my keyboard, I'll go to the top of the screen and select circle. I'm going to draw out a circle that's 200. I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to do another circle from that same center point. That's 300. OK, and we've got this bit here now. I'm going to just move this over using the pan tool. What we're going to do now is going to use the line tool. So again, you can use uh, the line tool from up here, or you can press L. I'm going to go for the line tool. I'm going to go from this center point, and the reason I know that's the center because it comes up with a cross. And I'm going to drag this out, and I want to dimension that to be 350. Any of these dimensions you can move around just in case they get in the way of your sketch. I'm going to use the line tool again. I'm going to come up 100. And then we're going to come across, OK, to this point here. So I'm going to come right across here and snap to that edge. We're then going to zoom in. I'm going to go to the center or the, yeah, the center of the circumference of the circle, basically, and drag that down. And then I'm going to click again. So I've created this sort of right angle here. And then what we're going to do is press E for extrude or go solid extrude. And I'm going to select these two plus this little sort of triangle or sliver of a design or sketch there. Go to the house so we can see what we're doing. And if we look at our drawing, what we need to do is extrude this 200. And we're going to type that in here. Or I could type in this box here, or I could just drag this out. So we've got 200 at the moment. And then I'm going to click OK. So again, this is about adding extra extrudes now to create this shape. So there are different ways of doing this. We could sketch on the top work plane and cut this down. We could also sketch on the front work plane and cut it you know, from the front to the back. Right? It's entirely up to you, the technique that you use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch, okay? And actually, I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to go Edit Feature, and again with the options, I'm going to go Symmetry. I'm just going to make sure that my planes are running through the middle, and I'm going to create a sketch here, like so. What we need to do is remove some of this. So I'm going to Basically, use a center or corner rectangle tool, should I say, to drag this out. Now, don't worry too much about the dimensions because I've got it snapped on the center. I'm going to use E for extrude and I'm going to drag and remove this and click OK. Now, what I need to do is just check my dimensions here. So I'm just going to click on measure. Just need to check that that is the correct size 100, which it is because the total thickness was 200, and I've sketched on the middle plane and removed that, so that's 100, so that's correct. So any of these you can check using the simple measure tool. Okay, what we've got next is we've got two features on here. So have a go out. And there's a little cutout here. So again, I could sketch on the, this surface, or I could sketch on this one. I could even go underneath and sketch as well. So I'm gonna sketch on this surface this time. Click select it, click sketch. And I'm going to come in and use this rectangle tool. So it's a corner one. I'm going to drag this up. And it needs to be, look at it, drawing 125 in this dimension by 50 in this amount. So just make sure you press tab to go between the two. So 125 by 50. Click Enter. 
Now we need to dimension it towards one of these edges because at the moment it's just floating around. And we can tell that because we've got the blue lines. So I'm going to click D for dimension at the top. And I'm going to dimension it from these two points up like that. I could have done the point to the edge or that line to the edge. It would do the same thing. And I'm going to dimension that to be 50. And then we've got this in the correct position. I'm going to click the green tick. Click on my home button and E for extrude again. I'll go up to extrude. I'm going to select this. So again, we've got a couple of options here. I could just drag this right through, okay, which is not really best practice. You would have been learning to type in dimension. So the dimension and the distance of this one could be minus 100. So we could do it that way. Or the other technique we could do, if I just delete that and turn this sketch back on, just in here. I could select that and I can click on that point there and click OK to create that feature. And the other technique you could use, so this is all about practicing different ways of doing extrudes, is to go extrude, select this, and go up to, OK, up to object, spin this around using this orbit tool and select bottom. And again, it will go up to that distance and it's telling me that it's 100 as well. So again, just that one feature, there's you know two, three different ways of creating it. Next one, we've got to create a little angle on here. Now I could use the tool, chamfer, but this is all about extrude. So we're going to create a sketch on here. And I'm going to turn this around using these arrows so I can see at this angle. I'm going to use a straight line, so L for line, and I'm going to snap it to these edges like so. So I'm just going to draw it up here so it snaps and it snaps. Now be careful not to sometimes snap it to the center line of that edge because it will not move afterwards. Okay, so we're going to click D for dimension. I'm going to go from that point to that point. Checking the drawing, it needs to be 50. And I'm going to go from this point to this point and click 50. And we've gone a bit wonky there. So what we need to start thinking about is using some of these okay, constraints. So if I go back, click undo, and just delete this. Okay, I can select that point there and that edge using control. And I'm going to click on coincident. And that's going to stick to that edge this time. I'm going to go click D for dimension again. Type in there, 50. So that point is sticking to that edge. So sometimes it's very good to get used to using some of these features up here in terms of constraints. All right, so just repeat that. I selected that point and that edge using control, and then I did a coincident okay, relationship or constraint. I can now go E for extrude. It will recognize this full shape here. Okay, or we made a make made a mistake again. Now that looks perfect, didn't it? You think, oh, why is that not extruding? Because if you zoom in quick, right close, you can see the gap. So sometimes you're gonna be really good at spotting things like that. So again, we're gonna come in, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna delete that dimension, and again, select that point using control, select the edge using control, and select coincident again, and then dimension it just to make sure. There we go, so 50. Now if we go extrude, okay, you will see I can select this edge. If I do this, click X, there we go, like that. So it's very good to check your sketches and make sure you're using those constraints. And again, I could go minus 100, or I can click on the point to cut it to the point, or again, I could go to object and select the bottom surface click OK. And if I just hide that, now the origins, we've got our basic design. The last challenge within Extrude is the master challenge. And what we're going to have a go at is creating a fin feature using Extrude. This is a relatively new feature in Fusion, but uh, it is an important feature to master. So we're going to have a go. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure we've got our origins on. I'm going to click sketch. I'm going to choose a work plane. And for this design, I'm going to use a two point rectangle. I'm going to drag out from the center 
and this is going to be a 10 by 10 millimeter square. I'm going to repeat this by using the rectangle tool, so selecting at the top or pressing R for rectangle, and I'm going to draw out a pattern as you can see on screen. Now you could dimension every one of these, but as you can see, it is snapping to what I want, so 10 by 10. And I can continue to do this, as you can see here. So I can go on and on and on, creating that pattern. And I click the green tick, click on the home button, so we can see what's happening in 3D, and decide the origin. I'm going to press E for extrude, or go to extrude at the top. And first of all, I'm going to show you what will happen if we just do an extrude. So I'm going to select each one of these by holding control. And I'm going to select each sort of alternate square, type in 10 millimeters, and click OK. So, as uh, we've done before, that's just created a number of cubes. But what we want to do this time, if I right click and left click edit, is use the thin feature. So, as you remember, I wanted it 10 millimeters, and of course, I could change that to whatever I want. And again, I've got the same options as I've had before. So, at the moment, that is doing one direction. 20 millimeters above the sketch. I could do two sided. That means I've got control of how much I can extrude both top and bottom. And then I can also do symmetry. So where I've got a total of say 20 millimeters, if I type that in. And that's doing 20 either side, 14 total, or I can have 20 like that. So again, you've got all the options that we've learned about before. So one-sided, two, and symmetrical as well. So what I want actually is all I'm going to do is a one-sided. I'm going to do 10 millimeters up because I've drawn my squares to be 10 millimeters, so I want cubes. What it's also done here is giving it a wall thickness of one millimeter. And if I just twist this around, you can see here it's giving it a wall thickness. And if I change that dimension, so I'm just going to put that to five, or maybe five is a little bit too thick, let's go two, there you go. You can see that wall thickness is getting thicker and thicker and thicker. So all I'm going to do is change up to one. And then I have a few other options. I can have the wall thickness. So do you want it on the inside? So that's basically looking at my sketch and it's doing the wall thickness on the inside. If I click outside, it will flip this to the outside of the sketch. And I could do center, which will basically do this because I've selected one millimeter, okay, half a millimeter either side. So what I'm going to do, we're going to have a look at some of these options, what it looks like in 3D. So we've got 10 millimeters up, just one-sided, okay, wall thickness of one millimeter inside. We'll see what we've got there, like so. So that's what I want to create, but let's just explore some of the other options and see what we get. So if we right click on that, and this time change it to the outside and click OK. So as you can see here, it's created a slightly different shape because it is, if we turn on the sketch and work from here, it's basically doing or creating the extrude on the outside of that. And again, if we click on this one, and we click on center, click OK. What we've got there is the extrude is extruded okay, equally on either side of the sketch. Now it's important if you were designing this to be a certain dimension, and if you were de designing this to say certain other parts that fit within this, okay, or this is going to attach to another component or part, it's very important, okay. That you use to select and I'll use and select the correct technique here because if I go inside, I know if I dimension these and check that these are going to be 10 millimeters, these dimensions. So it's important not just to go, oh yeah, that's it. Okay, I've got that done. It's important to select the correct okay wall location depending on what you want to create. So very quickly. Okay, I've created, if I just turn that off and go to the home button, you can see I've created this quite complex in a way. 
but very, very quick shape using the fin wall feature. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.